is true here is that every single one of them has not acknowledged the fact that Palestinians are dying in the tens of thousands, but will continue to say it is us who are not acknowledging humanity. Rashida will stand strong. Gentle ladies, time has expired. Movement will continue for liberation until every Gentle single ladies, time has expired. Has the right Ge to gentleman live from Maryland is recognized. On this vote, the yeas are 234 and the nays are 188, with four answering present. The resolution is adopted. Without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. The far-left woke activist Rashida Tlaib is officially censured by the U.S. House and a number of her Democrat colleagues joined in. We're going to see the latest on the censure. We're going to see some of the silliest, most unhinged woke antics imaginable that accompanied it and why a Democrat civil war threatens to split the party for a generation. You're not going to want to miss this. The ultra-leftist Palestinian Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib was officially censured by the U.S. Congress last night. She's only the 26th congressman to be censured in the history of our republic. The formal rebuke is in response to Tlaib's history of making repeated anti-Semitic remarks, but most particularly her most recent tweet that repeated the lines of a chant that declares, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Now, the problem there is that the river the chant is referring to is the Jordan River. So from the Mediterranean to the Jordan River, uh, those are the boundaries of Israel. So the chant, particularly as it's used and celebrated by Hamas, is seen by many as a call for the destruction of Israel. So that's what's getting Tlaib in so much hot water, and even with her own party. The vote passed with 234 votes for and 188 against. And astonishingly, the vote for the censure included 22 Democrats. That's perhaps the single most shocking development of them all. 22 Democrats did, they did what Democrats never do, which is cross the aisle and vote with Republicans to punish one of their own. And this despite the fact that Tlaib and her cultural Marxist allies in the Democratic Party did everything they possibly could to try to make this ultimately all about, yes, you guessed it, race of a, a lack of care and a lack of understanding and a lack of seeing the humanity of folks who look like Rashida Tlaib. It's outrageous that my colleagues are blatantly, blatantly attempting to silence the only Palestinian American representative right here. Um, it's outrageous, but it's not surprising. And let me tell you, it's not surprising because this place is where 1,700 members of Congress, this elected body, enslaved black people. It's not surprising because they thought it was right. It's not surprising because this is a place where members continue to claim that the insurrection on the Capitol just appeared to look like a normal tourist visit. It's not surprising because this is the place where our black and brown staff members repeatedly speak of experiencing racism and sexism, Islamophobia, get pushed off of elevators, xenophobia and more right here in this workplace. This is the place. And let me say this. She mourns for the 1400 Israelis. The gentlelady's time has expired. She mourns for the 10,000 and she will not stop. No the more. Time no has more expired. lies. Cease fire now. And she takes the, the death threats that you all send. That, that they the gentlelady is no longer speaker. recognized. The gentleman from Maryland. To hurt, to hurt the desire to save lives is greater. Gentle, gentleman from Maryland is recognized. That's okay. what I said. We'll, we'll reserve. The gentleman from Maryland reserves. The gentleman from Georgia is recognized. Now, obviously, that was one of the most unhinged rants imaginable, but it's actually indicative of a very real civil war that's erupting from within the Democrat Party. As it turns out, the Israeli-Hamas conflict is, in fact, tearing the Democrat Party apart. But first, you know how you can really stick it to the woke left? It's just by clicking on the link below and getting your very own set of these collectible limited supply Trump cards. 
Patriots played their anti-globalist Trump card against the left in 2016 and were getting ready to play it again in 2024. So what better way to show your support for Trump's re-election than with these five collectible pieces of Trump art? These cards have a limited supply, so don't wait. Only 2,500 sets of these cards are set to be made, and they all come with a certificate of authenticity verifying you own an original set. These make great gifts for any MAGA patriot in your life. And if you buy two sets, you also get a bonus gold Trump 2024 card absolutely free. These physical cards are high quality, made in America, and highly collectible. And again, there's only a limited supply, so don't wait. By the time you remember, they'll likely be gone. So click on that link below right now and get your Trump cards today. Almost immediately after Tlaib was censured, the far left rose up in defiance of their own party. MSNBC host Mehdi Hassan took to Twitter, or X, and wrote, quote, 10,000 plus Palestinians killed, including 4,000 plus kids, and the U.S. House of Representatives is busy censuring the only Palestinian American member. Can't make this stuff up. Mark Lamont Hill, who himself was fired from his affiliation with CNN because of his own incendiary comments, wrote, quote, Rashida Tlaib sold out by 22 congressional Democrats naming names. But of course, this pro-Palestinian outrage is only further shocking so many pro-Israeli proponents who up until now have aligned themselves with the political left. We're seeing more and more articles coming out on just how stunned American Jews are for the amount of rabid hatred against Israel that's coming out not from the political right, but from their own political left. While Republican voters are overwhelmingly pro-Israel, but 80% of Republican voters fully support Israel's campaign against Hamas, the situation is very different when you poll Democrats. Astonishingly, Democrat voters are siding with the Palestinians by an 11-point margin, 49 to 38. Now, what's happening here is a very real break. So on one side, you've got Jews and those with pro-Israeli sentiments who have thus far voted Democrat, openly coming out and saying that there is no way they're voting for Democrats anymore. They simply cannot morally justify voting in the same way as those far leftists who are publicly advocating on behalf of what many believe to be a blatantly murderous and genocidal ideology, namely that of Hamas. So Jewish leaders are openly saying they've never seen this in their lifetime. They've never seen so many Jews expressing how done they are with the Democrat Party. If the Democrat Party is now the de facto party of pro-Palestinian activism, they are outright done with it. So you've got Biden and the Democrats facing a boycott, as it were, from the pro-Israeli side of the party. But it gets worse. As we talked about on a number of other videos, Muslim and Arab Americans who were instrumental in Biden's support back in 2020, they're now coming out and openly telling Biden that there is no way they're going to back him in 2024 because of his blanket support for Israel in the Hamas conflict. NBC News just published a report on Biden's support among Muslim Americans absolutely cratering, particularly in the swing state of Michigan. It has one of the highest Muslim populations in the nation. According to a study conducted by Biden's own pollster, while 70% of Muslims voted for Biden in 2020, that support has now plummeted to just 16%. One, six, 16%. So, Democrat politicians like Biden may soon find themselves on the wrong side of not one, but two boycotts by voter demographics that were absolutely crucial in swing states like Michigan. So all of this is to say that we continue to see a very real fallout from the Israeli Hamas war, a fallout that risks permanently splitting the Democrat Party for a generation. Are you ready to join the resistance? Because I'm leading a group of dedicated, courageous patriots who can lead a spearhead into the heart of the secular globalist establishment. We punish Bud Light and Target, driven CNN and the legacy media to near bankruptcy, forced BlackRock to backtrack on ESG, and now we're seeing our conservative-dominated Supreme Court ending affirmative action and protecting religious liberty. In my Insiders Club, I show you concrete steps to take locally and online that will only keep this mass uprising going until the battle is won. Don't wait. Click the link in my description below and join my Courageous Patriots Insiders Club today.